thought for the season finale of the show, what better person to speak to apart from Aza Karim? Parents and my brother would say whenever we go out for an outing, you're just there drawing somewhere. So how did the canvas start? I always thought to myself, why can't I also be on the other side of the camera for once? There are times where, yeah, I feel down, but at the same time, I'm like, no, I should just take it as it is. Because once you put yourself out there, it is bound to happen. Coming back to your work, what are some of your own favourite pieces from your collection? So there are two pieces that are very special to me. It, it was a huge uh, like culture change, a culture like shift. But I got used to it. Sri Lanka is an amazing country in its own way. Do the best you can to the best of your ability and don't be too hard on yourself. Welcome to The Canvas. We are at the beautiful Gallery for Life today and it's a lovely space where you can showcase your arts and crafts and to talk to us, we have a very special person here with us today. If you've been following the canvas, you'd know him as the host and the producer of the show. And we thought for the season finale of the show, what better person to speak to apart from Aza Karim. Hi Aza, how are you today? I'm doing good, how are you? I'm great. Aza is a content producer at Vijay Networks and he calls himself as a student of art. So let's speak to him and get to know about his passion for art and lots more. Aza, who are you as a person? It feels so different getting asked that for the first time. Usually I ask people that. As a person, I feel I'm a creative individual. I feel I'm also very sensitive and I'm hardworking. I do what I can to the best of my ability, but at the same time, I try to take risks. I'm 26 years old. I was born and raised in Dubai. I lived there for 25 years. And I just recently came here. It's been a year and a half. And it, it was a huge uh, like culture change, a culture like shift. But I got used to it. Sri Lanka is an amazing country in its own way. I am also an advertising graduate. I have a Bachelor of Arts in Communication. In terms of art, what I've studied, I did A-levels and I got a C in it. But however, I was really happy with that grade because I knew how the amount of effort and hard work I put into it. Art to me is something that is like, it's my identity in a way. Without art, I feel there is no other. I'm not trying to sound pretentious, but I always felt like everyone had their own release in terms like some would be sports, some would have another sort of release. But for me, it was art. In high school also, like uh, from a young age, teachers would dump whatever art project related work to me. They'd be like, oh, I'll give it to Azar, he can do it. It was annoying, but at the same time, it, it felt good that someone could at least trust me with that work. So how I got into studying art also was like an interesting story because I did my IGCSC. We were doing the Cambridge curriculum, curriculum in Dubai. So, in the first school I studied, which was Westminster, till my O-levels, they didn't have art. So then when we went to Cambridge, International School of Dubai, they had the option of art. I was going to take, we were only allowed to take three subjects. So economics was one of them. Last moment, I felt like I didn't want to do economics, I wanted to do art. I was a bit lost in my life. I was like, okay, art might be easy, I'm probably good at this and all, and I was wrong. I was completely wrong. I was too naive. Somehow the arts, uh, my, my, I would call him my mentor, he let me in. He told me, okay, you can do it from AS levels. I didn't do so well in the first year, I'll be honest. But somehow he kept trying to bring out the best of me. Because we as creatives, like, we get carried away. We always try to, we have multiple ideas and in the end, we try to put it all together and it comes out as a bad product. He somehow bought the best in me, he disciplined me. So I did my A-levels and I got a C and I was very happy with it because like I said, I gave my best. I know the amount of sleepless nights and the amount of effort I had to put to get that grade. Then I did advertising in the Canadian University of Dubai and because I wanted a career that matched with sort of like business at the same time something creative and I felt like advertising was the way to go. So then I once I came here into this country, I was also looking for a job and uh, my dad one day just told me, like he just saw a newspaper ad of Vijay Networks hiring 
like uh, people and he just said why not try your luck and, and I somehow came to Vijaya Networks and here I am. So from Vijay Newspapers to the canvas, how did the canvas start? Think of this like uh, I was just a young guy, I came to the company, I was new and my position was actually a videographer slash video editor. So we would always go to events and interviews and all and I always thought to myself why can't I also be on the other side of the camera for once, you know, I never got any opportunity or that in the past. So then I asked my boss, both my bosses, Rishni and Ashni, I asked Ashni first, like, can I try out, you know, just to present at one event or something like that. And he said, yeah, sure, like, why not? And then even Rishni also approved. They said, why not? Why don't you try it out? And uh, I'll be honest, I wasn't that great in the beginning. I'm still learning throughout. And then later on, we got more opportunities. Our bosses said we can come up with new shows, anyone has any ideas. So I thought why not do a show about art? Because uh, I knew how it felt to be in a place where people would not notice you and like you want to just bring out your talent and just showcase it in a way. So I said, I just asked her like, okay, can I have a show like this? And she said, yeah, sure, you yeah, know, have it. And then I was thinking of a name and the name Canvas came up. And the main concept of the show was like just to help out those underrated artists because there's a lot of talent in Sri Lanka and I just got tired of seeing the same people getting promoted. There's nothing wrong with that. But I do feel there's more younger talent, not only young, there's even more people who are older and very talented as well. So I just want to showcase that on this platform. I think that's a beautiful concept. Uh, you coming up with your own show purely to help out underrated mm -hmm. artists in Sri Lanka. That thought itself is very beautiful. And who are your influencers in terms of art? So, as I said, from a young age, I just like to either scribble on a paper, do something. Like my parents and my brother would say, whenever we go out for an outing, you're just there drawing somewhere. And I feel most of it came from like a lot of different influences, but I would like to thank two people. One, one is my mom and uh, one is my mentor in Cambridge International High School. So my mother is also a talented artist and she is very crafty. She was a kindergarten teacher. Uh, so she was always creative and she had a creative mindset. I guess genetics came and I got also that some of it. And only recently she told me that even my granddad also used to like to draw and, and that was very interesting to know. And in terms of, like I mentioned earlier, in terms of my high school, my art sir, he was very like stern and strict. At the same time, he would like us to have fun when producing work. So whatever I am in terms of how I see things and also like very, because I'm very disciplined when it comes to certain things, I owe it to him because he helped me be that way. Like he didn't always say like just do art. He didn't make me do art for the sake of it because sometimes we just paint just like that. Right. He made me be more focused, more like, like focused on the topic or on the subject and the piece when you're producing that artwork. So having good mentors in your life is definitely a key in achieving great pieces of art. And on that note, I think it's a beautiful concept that you wanted to have your own show mm -hmm. to promote underrated artists in the country. And how has the reception been? It has been good. It has been also really good because a lot of people have liked the fact that, you know, they're getting a chance, you know. Yes. To, and they also get to see people who they probably never heard of. At the same time, there have been some criticism in terms of probably my presenting. Okay. And that's the thing, I don't have any presenting experience, but at the same time, it doesn't put me down that people criticize and give their opinions even if it's negative, because it just makes me want to try harder. There are times where, yeah, I feel down, but at the same time, I'm like, no, I should just take it as it is, because once you put yourself out there, it is bound to happen. So I don't mind it. It just motivates me to try harder. That's nice. And how, when you get some serious criticism, do you have any coping mechanisms? How do you deal with it? I just talk to my loved ones and I just say like, 
they told me about this and should I actually really focus on anything because I know my loved ones they give genuine reactions and they they don't criticize they give constructive criticism and then I say oh okay you know what I should take it as it is I shouldn't get hurt about it I should actually focus and try to improve like work on it so yeah coming back to your work what are some of your own favorite pieces from your collection so there are two pieces that are very special to me and one would be called the prisoner of war so this was done during my a level time it was for a coursework project the topic was based on war so it's an image of technically this individual wrapped around with a cloth and is holding onto a bar and as if he's getting pulled you know so that image like it technically is trying to symbolize like the person with the cloth on his face is trying to symbolize the prisoner of like technically symbolizing the victims of war a lot of pe lot of wars and tragedies happen around the world and sometimes we just brush it off because it's not happening to us so that was the main point of it so i remember to even take that picture that person behind the cloth was actually me and i just told oh. the person to take a picture of me and then i told him to edit it with photoshop to make it look bluish the reason it was bluish because we had to also use influence so i used the influence of pablo picasso he had a series of painting called the blue face mm -hmm. it was based on a lot of depressing stuff so i added into that and i remember i used soft pastel as the medium to okay. create the piece and i was doing it and as i finished it and i showed it to my art sir he clapped and because he felt that was the first time i felt he liked my work genuinely because usually when i had a work and it, if it wasn't good he wouldn't say it's bad he would just not he would just be like don't you think you have to do this or don't you think you have to do that you know he would be very stern he wouldn't just always be like a oh, good job azar but when i heard that from him like he just clapped and he was like good job you know this was really good it meant a lot to me because i felt like you know in a way i was trying to win his approval at the same time i kept challenging myself and another piece of mine that is favorite to me is like uh, the martial eagle during that phase i was there was a phase like i was somewhat depressed and okay. like it i haven't been painting for a long time this was probably during it was like 3 4 years back so i had time okay. so i thought why not paint and i exper i experimented with different mediums usually i don't paint much i painted i used different mediums and i just saw this image of like a uh, eagle like on the nat geo instagram page and i thought like why not try something like with this you know something different i didn't have anything in planned or in mind so i did it i felt like i had a plan while doing it but at the same time i didn't but somehow i was happy with the results cuz i felt like during that phase i created some work and i remember once we got a chance to showcase it at a university and i just saw someone clicking a picture of it from far and that meant a lot to me cuz i thought like oh someone actually appreciates my work so yeah this what's your favorite medium i i think it would be soft pastels okay and uh, with the ink pen yeah those two are my favorite mediums I'll start off with soft pastels. I like to get really messy with it. Like you just get to use your hands and you get to create like what you want and it's it's really fun. Like it's a very messy work and you feel like you're in it. You're actually interacting with the art. So my favorite medium would be soft pastels because you really get to get mess messy with it, dirty with it and just create amazing work with it. And in terms of ink and sketch pens, like I have a small book where I just sketch out certain things and i'm trying to hopefully fill that sketchbook and the method i like to use is uh, there's a term called cross hatching cross hatching is technically where it's a lot of scribbling but it's also a lot of planned scribbling like i think scribbling would be the wrong term but that's how i see it and yeah those two are my favorite things oh what do you like to draw the most is it people places animals i think it's I think it's anything to be honest anything. but I prefer I don't prefer landscape that much but okay. I prefer people and animals yeah any words of encouragement for other upcoming artists and people who've been following your show I would always say like uh, 
keep dabbling, keep trying different things. And it's okay if you're lost with where you want to go in life, everyone is. So just keep doing something at least, keep trying. And in terms of like always try to promote yourself wherever you can with the help of social media, I feel everyone should always promote themselves, you know. Because there's this thing where people say like, oh, if you're always showcasing your work or this and that, you come off as a show off or people see you as a show off, this and that. I believe in if you're not going to promote yourself, who is going to promote yourself, you know. So do the best you can to the best of your ability and don't be too hard on yourself. So Aza, what does art mean to you? Art to me is my identity. To some people it's a release, to some people it's just their passion. I feel art is something very special to me. I feel that is what... It, it holds a special place in my heart. And no matter what, I will still try my best to do art. In a way also it affects how I see life and how I see things around me. Because uh, everyone sees life in a different way, but maybe as an artist or even through other, other creatives would know, we see things differently. Like when we see an object or when we go to a surrounding place, we see like probably texture, the location, like how beautiful the thing is, you know. That's what art is to me, like it even affects like even your personality in a different way. So yeah, to me, art is, to people, it's their identity and to me also it's a part of my identity.